Today we're going to be talking about compound interest. So compound interest is interest that is earned on your current balance or how much money you currently have in an account. So simple interest, if you make an investment, you only earn simple interest on the original investment only. But when you have compound interest, you earn interest on your original investment plus you add interest on top of the interest on top of the interest that you've been earning all along. So you get interest on your original balance plus any interest that you've already earned. So we're going to see how this works. We're going to try a question. It's going to look very similar to the one we did for simple interest. It says Carlos invested $1,000 in an account that earns 10% per year compounded annually. How much money will he have at the end of five years? So when I look at this question, the way that I can tell that it's compound interest is it will have the word compounded in there. And if you don't see the word compounded, it is probably not compound interest. So I am going to highlight any important numbers here. It says he invested $1,000. That seems important. He's getting 10% per year, which is a very unrealistic interest rate to get on an account, um, but it works really nicely for doing these calculations. And he is leaving his money for five years. So we're going to fill out a table. We did a very similar one with simple interest. Um, so in year zero, so at the start of this investment, he goes to the bank and he puts in $1,000. He didn't earn any interest. He just walked into the bank and he made his investment. So after that money sits in the bank for one full year, he gets 10% of his balance or 10% of that $1,000. So to get 10% of 1,000, I'm going to take $1,000 and multiply it by 10%. Now percent means per 100. So it's 10 divided by 100. So I can't just do 1,000 times 10. I have to do 1,000 times 10 divided by 100. So 1,000 times 10 divided by 100 gives me $100. So he earned in that first year $100 in interest. So he had $1,000 to start, he now has an extra $100, so he has a grand total of $1,100. Now this is where it starts to deviate from simple interest. In year two, you're not just earning interest on the initial $1,000. He's actually getting interest on his current balance, which is $1,100. So I'm going to have to calculate his interest by taking $1,100 and finding 10% of that. So I'm going to multiply that by 10 and divide by 100. So $1,100 times 10 divided by 100, which means in year two, he's not just getting $100 in interest, he's getting $110 in interest. So he actually got more money, which is exciting. So I'm going to add that on to the original, the, sorry, his current $1,100 that he has in his bank account to get that he now has $1,210. Okay, year three rolls around and he gets another 10% interest and it's of his current balance. So that means $1,210, we are going to find 10% of that. So $1,210 times 10 divided by 100 means that time around he gets $121 in interest. So you'll notice every time he actually is getting a little more and a little more and a little more interest because his balance is going up. So if I add that on to the $1,210, I get a grand total of $1,331. Okay, so next time around we take his current balance, $1,331. I'm going to find 10% of that. I multiply it by 10, divided by 100. So times 10 divided by 100 gives me 131.1. 1. 
So that's 100, sorry, I misread that. That's 133 .1. Money should always have two decimal places. So after that one, there is a zero. So that's actually $133.10. I'm going to add that on to my current balance. So I'm going to add that to $1,331 to see that he now has $1,464.10. Okay, we have one more row to go. This is a lot more work than simple interest was. So $1,464.10 times 10%, so 10 out of 100. Take this number, multiply by 10, divide by 100. It gives me 146.41, so it gets $146.41 in interest. If I add that on to the $1,464.10, I get 14, oops, yep, nope, wait, I'm going to read, add that. $1,464.10 plus 146.41 gives me $1,610.51. So compound interest is a little more complicated to calculate than simple interest. Simple interest is really basic. It's just on the original amount. We only had to calculate that interest once, and then we just kept adding that same number. Um, but compound interest is a little more complicated. You're always taking your current balance and finding the percentage of that over and over and over and over again. So in the end, Carlos would have $1,610.51. That's pretty good. He got $610.51 in interest, right? That's the difference between $1,000 and $1,610.51. So there are a couple little questions to go with this. The first one says, is this linear or exponential? So simple interest was linear. We were going up by the same number every time. Am I adding the same number every time? No. We added $100 the first time, and then $110, and then $121, and then $133. So we're not adding the same number every time. But if you take your calculator and you take the first two numbers, if I take 1,100, so the second number, and divide it by the first one, I get that we multiplied by 1. Point 0.1. If I try that with the next two numbers, if I take $1,210 and I divide it by the one above it, so $1,100, I also get that we multiplied by 1.1. If I try the next one, if I do 1,331 and I divide it by the one above it, so 1,210, I get again that we multiplied by 1.1. So what's happening here? is that every time we are multiplying by 1.1. So 1,000 times 1.1 1 .1 is 1,100. And if I multiply that by 1.1, 1 .1, I get 1,210. If I multiply that by 1.1, 1 .1, I get 1,331. If I multiply that by 1.1, 1 .1, I get $1,464.10, right? So it, it is working which means since we're not adding by the same amount, we are multiplying by the same amount, this is actually exponential. So exponents are repeated multiplication. So this is repeated multiplication. We are repeatedly multiplying by 1.1, so this is exponential. Okay, so our next question says, Write an equation that you could use to calculate the amount of money after n years. So looking at the information that's here, is there a way for me to figure out an equation that would let me calculate how much money I have um, in year 10 or year 30 or year 50? Although that's a long time to invest your money for. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to try to do is see if we can find a little pattern here. So I've got $1,000 to start. So we started with $1,000. And then the next year, we had $1,000 times 1 1.1. That was how we got that. And then the next year, we multiplied by 1.1 again. So we had $1,000 times 
1.1, that's the original amount, and then times another 1.1. Now, if I'm multiplying by the same thing twice, I could actually simplify that by saying that is 1.1 squared. So for this one, this is $1,000 times 1.1 squared. That's the top one. And then we're multiplying by another 1.1. So since I have 1.1, I have two of these and one of these, I can use exponent laws to say that this is actually 1.1 to the power of 3. And if you didn't 100% understand that, that's okay. Um, we're just trying to look for a pattern here together. So I noticed that the final amount that I get is $1,000 to start times 1.1 to the power of, well, here it was the power of 3 and we were in year 3. Here it was the power of 2 and we were in year 2. So it's to the power of n. And we're going to try that out. We're going to try it for year 5 and see if that works. So I'm going to do 1,000 times 1.1 to the power of 5. And I get... $1,610.51, so it actually works. Now, there is one last part here that says develop a formula for calculating compound interest, and we're just going to do this quickly. Um, I'm never going to ask you to do this on your own. So um, when I take a look at this, I am just going to do it in words first. Um, a is my final amount, so our final amount equals now that $1,000, where did that come from? That was the original amount of money that he had to invest. So it was his starting amount. That actually has a name, it's called the principal. So it's the starting amount times, now the tricky part is, where did the 1.1 come from? So 1.1, at least the decimal part, is 10% divided by 100. So if I do 10 divided by 100, that's where the point 0.1 came from, right? The 1 is actually just the number 1. So it is 1 plus, now that 0 0.1 is my interest rate when it's been divided by 100. Um, I guess we were doing that word, so I'm going to say interest rate. And then that is to the power of n, which is our number of years. So we're going to use the same letters that we used when we were doing simple interest. We're going to say our final amount is A. Our starting amount is the principal, or P. We have the number 1 plus I. Our interest rate, we use the letter I. We use a lowercase i. And then to the power of and that's the formula that we're going to use when we're calculating um, compound interest. It's very similar to the simple interest formula. The only thing that's different is the location of the n. This is exponential, so the n is in the exponent. When we were doing simple interest, the n was inside the bracket being multiplied by the i. So the formula we're going to use is a equals p times 1 plus i to the power of n. So in the next video, we will try some examples of that.